Welcome to the first video of Cinema Corner. That's right, the uh, rebrand starts now. And uh, we figured, you know, as we're now Cinema Corner, the first thing we should do to start off, you know, somewhat the new channel, uh, is talk about a movie that a lot of people are talking about is the best animation uh, movie, you know, in that world of cinema, uh, which is, of course, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Um, right. Across the Spider-Verse. Yep, I knew that. I paid attention to it. Uh, obviously, the sequel, I was just saying it was a sequel to Into the Spider-Verse, uh, came out, you know, 2018, five years ago. And now, finally, after having to wait all that time, we get the sequel. Uh, so, you know, obviously, there's only one way to really start this channel off, which is Alex, thoughts? See, I I would go first here, but the the thing is, is that I don't want this video to be about positive, 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 and then and on a negative. I'd rather just get the negative out out the way. So I'm gonna give it to you first, since you hated the first one and hate this one too. So let's just get Double all the negative out of the way. Oh, okay. And uh, that's yeah. weird. That's weird. Cool. I hated the. That's I don't remember saying I hated them. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I can talk about it. That's fine. Uh, I did not hate the movies. Let's uh, get that out front. Well, I guess let's not even talk about the first one. Who gives a fuck about the first one? Uh, this movie, yeah, it was not anything great. It was not spectacular to me. Um, that doesn't mean I hated it. I thought it was a decent movie. Um, but uh, I definitely, I don't think this movie was anything crazy special. Which, uh, unfortunately, uh, it seems like if you watch this movie... You better think it was the greatest movie of all time. Otherwise, you're just automatically wrong. Um, so, you know, going on a limb here, saying it was just a decent movie. Um, I mean, the animation was good. You know, obviously, I think the animation was good. Uh, the soundtrack was amazing. Metro Boomin created a phenomenal soundtrack. Uh, the fucking scene of uh, spoilers, obviously, for this video. The scene where uh, Gwen first shows up in his world and they go for a little, like, swing chase thing around the city. Bro, with self love in the background, that song and them swinging, that scene was that scene was really good. Like the animation of them swinging around and that music in the background, that that was fire. Um, but overall, I mean, I I don't think the plot was anything too special to me. And uh, I think a big part of that is I'm over the whole multiverse right now. Like I just I don't care about multiverses anymore. I've seen too many of them. It's all the same thing. We have to stop this, otherwise everything's gonna implode not everything ever implodes so like i'm kind of over it between you know obviously the first spider verse we had some of that um multiverse of madness with dr strange we had some of that end game we had them having to like put the stones back to not fix i'm just i'm just over multiverses um but yeah i thought animation was really solid soundtrack was phenomenal um but yeah that's all i'll say all right back to alex thoughts then <laughs> all right then all right, so I really liked the, the first one a lot, and uh, I thought that this sequel going into it, it had a lot to live up to. It, it was great. It was the first multiverse movie that, that really kicked everything off, and it did it the best, honestly, like up, up until this one, and it, it was just, it was wild. The twists and turns in this movie, the animation was insane. The soundtrack, like Blake said, was probably better than the first one, and but the first one was re really nice. Um, I, I just I don't even know where to begin because it's it's such a it's a it's a longer movie. It's for an animated movie. I think it's like two hours and ten minutes long. If I'm not 20. mistaken, or twenty minutes long. It was like two twenty, including credits. Yeah. Yeah. So it was uh I think one of the longest animated movies. So and they packed a lot into it. Um, I just loved the visual art styles of every individual uh, world. Gwen's world at the beginning, you know, starting it off, that, that was nice. Having self-love play, play through it. Haley Steinfeld killed it one, once again. <laughs> <laughs> he muted his mic because he was trying to laugh. It, it's, all, it's, it's all good. It's, it's all good. Um, <laughs> voice acting elite. Animation elite story elite I'm, I'm probably just gonna give it to josh to really go in, into the details because i'm pretty sure he's 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 lived and breathed this one for sure he's been sending me a, a, a lot of tiktoks late, lately my tiktok and, uh, has been invaded unintentionally just literally yeah, a minute after leaving the movie theater 
It has yeah. not it has not been <laughs> freed of this invasion for a while now. Um, I think the weird thing for me is unlike a lot of other people going into this film. I mean, I liked the first one. You know, I thought it was really solid, really good. You know, um, but I didn't expect this movie to be great. I didn't ex definitely did not expect it to be better than a previous one. I went into this thinking, yeah, I'm going to enjoy this movie. And that's about it. And as well as even me going into this film was wondering, like, was it worth even seeing it in IMAX? You know, spending a little extra for an animated film in a bigger screen, you know, would that even be worth it? And then the opening scene happens with Gwen's world and them kind of doing the comic book transitions throughout that like opening scenes um as well as just her scenes anytime with her and her dad of just doing the warm and cold colors to represent you know their emotions towards each other it was right off the bat i was like okay this was worth seeing it in the big screen for sure and it definitely added to the movie um also just you know shout out our go to theater returned and it killed it in the audio i thought everyone's been complaining that they had audio issues with the film i personally thought it was great and was well blended at least in our theater that we watched it in i thought it, everything was fine um so i thought that was kind of funny like leaving it saying that was kind of a bit cri like criticism of was the audio mixing especially in the first half of the film um personally did not experience that otherwise i mean i think the nice i thought it was kind of bold for them to start the film off i guess not really say bold but i thought it was cool to start it off with gwen and kind of introduce the film more with her. And it took a little bit for us to even see Miles, you know, the main character, obviously, of the film. Um, as well as, you know, hey, Miguel, man, goaded. Absolute menace in this film. Uh, them kind of even doing their nice little, uh, it's not really almost, it almost sounded like a remix of the Prowler's like song for his. Of when, anytime he went into the scene, the more of it was like high pitched. So that was kind of cool because, you know, he still is a good guy, but is slightly the villain you could even look at um, in terms of Miles and his story. Um, as well as Spot, had a soft spot for Spot because, I mean, he was one of the, probably like at least the most memorable villains I could remember from the really old Spider Man cartoons. And then he's in this. And then, of course, at the end of the film, you know, spoiler, they make him look like an absolute menace. Uh, so I'm excited for that. Uh, overall, though, um, animation was killer throughout the film. I mean, Spider-Punk, him alone in every scene, he shined just because of his animation. Um, as well as in the, of course, the little cameos. I mean, Spider-Man PS4 in there, even to the point of like just i mean lego spider-man you got the popsicle stick spider-man showing up <laughs> in the scene i mean there's so many tiny things that keep adding into that uh that was cool of course the different versions of the cartoon animated shows of spider-man being in it was super dope spectacular um, spider-man exactly and then even showing some scenes that weren't actually in the show but for the canon events for those spider-man that would either a the show never got to it or just in general, just never showed that. So that was, of course was cool. Um, a lot of just, you know, of course, fun cameos. Um, that was nice. But I would say, like I said, I love this film and I think it's great. I think the only thing that stopped it from being easily, I would say my favorite animated movie of all time is the fact that the third part of the movie, at least kind of when you're getting into that third part, I realized there's no way they're going to wrap all this up and it's a setup film. And when that kind of happened, uh, it lost a couple points of me being like, damn, okay. It kind of takes away from how great this film was. And they put a lot of effort into it, a lot of energy, a lot of time animating each character. And they added a lot of depth. I felt like to a lot of even the previous characters we've seen because the first one, it almost felt like night and day from the first film. The first one definitely felt just like a nice, fun, wholesome film um, about a new Spider-Man's journey. And as well as like a classic old Spider-Man. And in this one, there's a lot more serious tone to it in multiple versions for almost every character. And 
it just kind of took it a bit away that it's going to be a setup film at the end you know it's like oh now the gang's uniting so for me that definitely it lost a couple points um otherwise i would have gave the film like a 48 out of 50 but it, I, it dropped it down to a 46 for me yeah whoa, whoa. guys doing it on a different scale than we do on the channel that's kind well, of well i i do it for the big go, you know on the channel will be rated differently yeah. but at least when initially yeah. i always do it out of 50. um so yeah i mean of why course 50? it's great so let's just talk about that real quick actually why 50 though why well like 100? because uh me and my girlfriend we combine our scores to equal out of 100 so oh, she rates it out of 50, 50. Okay. i rate it out of 50 then we combine it yeah um okay. so that way it kind of gives like a balance between our two scores and kind of creates like unique scores for each movie yeah but gotcha. um yeah so i mean yeah it was obviously great i just felt like just that end of the fact that you realize it's a setup definitely takes away a lot of that third part of the film um so I think even rewatching it, if I would rewatch it, I feel like that third part, especially the ending, would drag on um, and would not be as enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I, I still like the fact that you know you start to notice that he's not in the right world. He's he went to the world where the DNA mm. of the spider was. Is uh, I think it's Earth forty two. They sent him to that one six. I, yeah, forty two actually. Yeah, you mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And he's just like. He starts. He's, he actually gets the courage and like to tell his mom, her, or so he thinks his mom that he's Spider Man, but there's no Spider Man in on that on that world. It was supposed to be the miles of Earth forty two, and since there is no Spider Man, that whole world is is in chaos. And in, in turn, the miles of that Earth became the, the Prowler, and you know the reveal that you know he is the the prowler not not his uncle in this world and just that like standoff at, at, at the end we're just cutting back and forth between the miles like the main character miles and then like the braided miles um but that uh, it was, it was dope and um just seeing like gwen kind of gather the old crew from, from the first movie and also um spider punk and spider-man india from earlier on in the movie he has a good reason to join that team because Miles is the reason why his world is kind of or it was going to implode. But I guess there, I don't. What what, do you, what even is that like status actually? Now that I think about it, I didn't um, Miguel say that they're trying to stabilize it, but yeah, he said that's like a 50 -50. that was a canon event that yeah. the chief or like the, the, the captain was supposed to die and because mm -hmm. Miles saved him it was going to implode but i guess they were just yeah they were just going to try control. to contain it that's really right. that's really all they said is that they were going to try yeah. to fix what you know try to do what they can but that's that was the last that we heard about it or knew about it but given he shows up i would assume his world is relatively okay i would assume if his entire world got destroyed he wouldn't have showed up at the end I'm mm -hmm. assuming right. they got it under control. Kind of makes and sense. And that's probably why he's like, um, yeah, he like he he risked his life to save the captain of a different Earth. You know, I I'll help this team. Right. You know? So that that was dope. Um, yeah. I mean, it was just fantastic all all around. Um, definitely can't wait. I hope that the third one doesn't get delayed. It's supposed to be less. It's gonna get delayed. Away. It has. It's to be. That is 100 percent getting delayed. Yeah time frame Haley seinfeld said she hasn't even recorded her lines for it yet mm -hmm. so there's yeah, no fine. shot that that come out in march yeah. no way that's getting delayed yeah that's um, fine by but me. i will say spider punk was a fire um animation all that i really didn't care about it was whatever uh just because it was voiced by daniel Kaluuya. as soon as i heard his voice i was like that sounds familiar and then i heard him talk more i'm like it's daniel so uh he's goaded for that um other than that, I think it was kind of weird. Spot was all funny and stuff when he was like mainly white and then partial black. And at the end, he becomes a menace. He's mainly black. Just a little weird <laughs> racial thing, I feel like. Like, why does he have to be black to be the best? Like, he was funny and wholesome when he's white. But then as soon as he turns black, he has to turn into a I don't know. I just thought that was kind of weird. Um, I don't know about that. Uh, yeah, that was just one of my big, big takeaways from the film. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyways, you know. Um, yeah, it's, it's just like a, a bunch of Easter eggs. The animation was elite. Um, it's just nice to sure. see that, like, so some of this stuff that, like, they're showing in this sequel, it's coming back to the first one. Like, when mm. the, the OG Peter, 
or of that earth meets Miles and Miles was already bit when the spire sense goes off and Miles Miles' spire sense goes off it it's like purple and green which is the prowler which is what his destiny was looking to be if that spider from that other earth didn't come to 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 his to his earth but because he was bit then all of a sudden you see the shift of the purple and green to blue and red which is the spider-man colors so that, that that was unique it was showing that you know this spider really wasn't meant to bite this miles it was meant to bite the miles of earth 42 and that's kind of what's messing everything up here um so you know it, it, it was nice to get that like kind of at least half circle i, I think we're mm -hmm. gonna get that the full circle moment in in the third movie but uh, i'm definitely lo looking forward to it and again th this was a really good movie fantastic yeah, i gotta emotional. say um this one of the lines by miles normally like the one-liners or just like just simple stuff like that makes me cringe but for some reason it got me when he just said nah i'm gonna do my own thing i was like damn all right man i'm rooting for you again you know <laughs> you got me there as well as i love how ps4 spider-man even though he has his own miles just could give less than two fucks to just absolutely chase and try to capture yeah. his miles yeah <laughs> he just didn't give two fucks he's like i already got my own just fuck this one <laughs> for real oh we we got a uh, we got we got mentioned that donald glover was in it yeah. yeah, the Prowler from uh, you know, our Earth, whatever one nine nine nine, however nines uh -huh. it is. Um, yeah, Donald Glover. Yeah, that was that was interesting to see him to see that uh, real life adaptation inside of an animated movie. There was also like they showed scenes of Uncle Ben dying, and I think they showed Captain Stacy dying in Amazing Spider-Man. I, mm. I don't know if they showed Gwen. Yeah. I think they showed Gwen as well at one point. Um, but yeah, that was just you know they integrated that stuff. Um, seeing a real life person in an animated film, it looked pretty. It looked smooth. Um, but yeah, that was interesting to see Donald Glover. Hopefully, that kind of you know helps lead to the MCU in some sort. Um, mm -hmm. I would guess. I don't really know how exactly they want to. I mean, they made that, a lot but, of uh, references to the MCU. That's for sure. Yeah, because yeah. they they uh, Miguel mentioned that at the beginning of the movie where he's like mm -hmm. saying you know that nerd on earth 1999999 with dr strange so i was like yeah that, that's, yeah. that's cl and clearly uh tom holland spider-man yeah oh yeah, yeah. The branch being the exact same art style i mean you know they did it on like, purpose and yeah, then them right. branching out to kind of like the spider web after that but i mean it literally the same exact branch as we got at first introduced to in loki yeah so, i thought that was neat I mean, you know it's cool um well I mean, actually no probably endgame the branch that oh the, um... yeah 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 but i mean the same color oh, scheme i, I was whatever. more referencing for that oh, but yeah it, it is it did branch it from that branch but yeah right so yeah i mean it's nice um but you know i do i do see your thoughts still on blake with the multiverse fatigue um to kind of go off that i have a weird trend if it involves if the core plot point of the movie involves a bagel uh, apparently i end up loving the film for some reason I don't know why, but it's two for two so far of experiencing movies like that. Interesting little note. If it has a bagel as a core point, I'm going to end up loving the movie somehow. <laughs> just uh, I, just I a quickly that branch off that. With, that. with that bagel. And he took it personally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of I respect that, actually. Um, but yeah, also, I just want to touch. I thought uh, Gwen was uh not that nearly as good as she was in the first one in this one i thought she took a huge downgrade in terms of her writing her character arc in this one just my own personal thing that i thought like the first one i kind of liked her this one i thought she was pretty lame i was like oh it's the classic she can't tell him what's happening and she's gonna be cold to him and then all of a sudden she's gonna realize oh wait i should help him i was like wow man seen this before a couple times just thought she was definitely a downgrade I, don't know, I didn't really personally feel that much. I mean, I liked her intro of it actually showing her core background. Um, I think, I guess in that one part, yeah, you could say that it kind of played off of like that same story instead of continuing her issues with the fact that, you know, 
she already lost to Peter, and that's mainly should have been her more focus of her separation between her and Miles, instead of her just really knowing Miles' secret. Um, because they kept kind of bouncing off of that, you know, of her saying, like, you know, Spider-Man always goes after Gwen and it doesn't work out. So she was kind of alluding even extra to the fact of, like, she already fucked up when it came to her Peter. Um, so, yeah, but also that kind of, like, goes back to that, that third part of the movie where I think the reason why you could say her writing took a dip was because then they had to shift the tone of setting it up more, of it being a setup film instead of focusing on the plot points that I thought it did a great job setting up throughout the film. And then it kind of had that shift where me as a viewer, I realized, okay, now this is a setup and it kind of lost its endings for those plot points. And now the third one has a kind of a hard pressure of to solve a lot of plot points that was set up in this film because none of them got finished really at all. So there's a lot for this third film to do again, which is another reason why of speaking of it getting delayed, I would be totally fine of it getting delayed. Give it a chance to grow, man. I mean, you took a while on this one. It's totally fine. Take a while again. Fine by me. Especially when it's an anime Yeah, I mean, they film. have to. They yeah. have to. Because I think I saw something that it took them like about two years just for the chase scene in this one mm -hmm. to animate. So it's like, I don't know how I mean, far along they are, but they can't be super. Well, they can't Spider be super Punk far alone along with this one. caused delays. One character. Right. And I thought it was worth it. They delayed that. He looked fucking awesome, in my opinion. He was a great character towards the film. So, yeah, when it comes to animated film, just like even when it comes to, like, video games, man, you know, if you don't think you're done, it's fine to delay it a bit. Totally fine. It is never good to rush those kind of projects, ever. Yeah, so there's no way it should come out in March, um, mm -hmm. right? Because it's early March or late March, whatever it is in March. Um, mm -hmm. No shot is it coming out, or at least should it come out at that, that early of a time. Exactly. Um, but, uh, you know, the big moment... What are what are what are your rankings out of ten, guys? Where are we at with this? Well, I think to go on par with my forty-six, I guess I would give it. Uh, I would give it a nine point six out of ten. I could probably give it like a nine point five or nine point four. Still kind of on the fence. I kind of need to see it one more time. But yeah, it's 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 up there for sure. So I think I had the first one like a nine point two or three. I would see it again if it wasn't for TikTok literally showing me the entire film like five times over already. So <laughs> yeah. like, I know if I see it again, it's just gonna get that fatigue element. So yeah, yeah, I've seen a lot of TikToks on even my TikTok. I've been seeing stuff about it, and I'm like, what the hell? Why am I getting a bunch? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, my rating out of ten, it was like a six point four. Um, out of ten, don't don't really care to see it again. Uh, it was a one time watch, but uh. Yeah, I think that's uh, pretty much going to do it for this video. Uh, you know, Cinema Corner, you know, our uh, new rebrand. So uh, we're going to try to be more active on social media. So be on the lookout of those, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. And, uh, of course, like the video, subscribe to the channel for more content. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.